Hi everybody, I'm Alan. And I'm Melody. And we're going to show you how to play Devilish Dice. Devilish Dice consists of two phases, the betting phase and then the move phase. During the betting phase, players will use the betting zone here to place bets. After the betting phase is over, you'll move on to the move phase, where the winning player of the betting phase will roll two dice to move, whereas the losing player will only roll one. Players will keep score of the points they have on either side here. This section over here explains what happens if you are to land on a green or purple chance space. As you will eventually get into the stripping part of the game, you'll need to know what your clothes are worth. Here's the men's clothing values and the women's clothing values. Over here, you can learn about sexy punishment. That happens towards the end of the game. During me and Melody's playthrough of the game, we will describe what happens in each of these zones in more detail. Devilish Dice is a competition between you and your lover to find out who is the best at bluff. You'll both need to develop a keen betting strategy to avoid losing all of your clothes and becoming your partner's erotic play toy. Each player will have a player pawn that they will move around the board beginning on the start box. This is the scorekeeping zone where players will keep track of health points, heart points, and double points. Each player starts with 5 health points, 0 heart points, and 4 double points. Each player will have a divider, 5 dice, and a shaker cup. They will use the divider to hide their roll from their partner. After each player gets their 5 dice, there should be a single remaining die. This die will be used to represent the bet that is placed and is called the betting die. This die will stay in the betting zone, the betting phase. The player with the longest hair will start the betting phase. Both players use a shaker cup to roll their dice behind the divider. Make sure your partner cannot see your roll. I will go first and I will count up the dice that I have rolled. I will try to determine how many of one particular face value is rolled between both of us, keeping in mind that I don't know what Alan has. In this particular roll, I have five fours and four ones. Remember that each fire heart is a wild and can be counted as any number. One fire heart counts as one wild and one double fire heart counts as two wilds. You cannot bet on a double wild, however. You can only bet on single wilds. A double wild counts as two single wilds. I believe there are four fours between the both of us. In this case, I am starting out low because I already know that I have five fours just by myself. This way, I can comfortably raise whatever bet Alan places again. Now I must count up what I have and decide whether to raise the bet to a higher number or call her bluff. I have three wilds by myself. So, in this case, I choose to raise the bet to three wilds. This way, I am keeping the betting die going in a forward motion. Now, I have three wilds. I also suspect Alan has his own wilds, since he did bet that there were at least three wilds rolled. Therefore, I'm just going to up the stakes. I'll jump to six wilds. You are able to jump to any number in the betting zone so long as it is in a forward motion. It doesn't just have to be the next one up. And I am taking a risk because I don't actually know for certain that Alan has three wilds by himself. However, since I have wilds on my own, it is a risk I decide to take this round and it does put him in a trickier position. Now I have three choices. I can either 1. Raise the bet to a greater quantity of wilds, 2. Raise the bet to a standard number of a quantity of at least 11, or 3. Call devilish dice! Which means I do not believe that there are 6 wilds and both me and Melody have to raise our dividers and show each other our rolls. If I call devilish dice and there are at least 6 wilds between both me and Melody, I lose the betting phase this round. If I call devilish dice and there are less than six wilds between me and Melody, I win the betting phase this round. In this case, I do not want to raise the bet and decide to go with the option three and call devilish dice. 
So now we both have to raise our dividers and see what the roll actually was between the both of us. And oh look, I have three wilds and he has three wilds. So I win. Because there were actually six wilds between the both of us, he was wrong to call my bluff. Since he lost this betting phase, first he loses one health point. Since I won the betting phase, I get to roll two dice during this move round. He only gets to roll one. I roll my two dice for the move phase. I get a four and I get a double wild. Now I have two options. Single wilds are worth six move spaces. Double wilds are worth seven move spaces. So that combined with my four, I can choose to move 11 spaces on the board. This will potentially help me get around the board faster. However, if I do choose to move 11, I land on a negative health space, which would hurt me. I also have the option of only moving four spaces and instead of using my double wild to move, I can gain two heart points from it. In this case, I would also land on an additional two heart points if I choose to only move the four spaces. This is what I'm going to do this round. Since I lost the betting phase, I only get to roll one die for this move round. In this case, I rolled a three. I have no choice but to move three spaces, which results in me landing on a negative health point space. Unfortunately, this first round I lose two health points. I'm gonna kick your butt. Now that we've finished the move phase, we will go back and do the betting phase again. We will go back and forth between the move phase and the betting phase until one player wins. Or until I get two turned on to continue playing. This is true. Now I get to go first because I won the last betting phase. We roll behind the dividers again. I only have one ball this time. I have the greatest quantity of twos, so I feel like my best option is to bet five twos. I have a really crappy roll. I have no wilds, and I don't have more than one of any number. So my best option is to try and bluff my way out of this. I have no fives, however, I am going to confidently act like I have all the fives in the world. I am going to raise the bet to five fives. I don't have to move the betting die if I don't want to, so long as the face value can be increased. I cannot ever move the die backwards or lower the face value of the die. I'm feeling really unsure of this. I only have two fives. However, I believe that he has enough fives for me to be able to move forward. Therefore, I'm going to raise the bet. I'm going to say that there are six fives. She completely fell into my trap. I know I have zero fives, and I'm pretty sure she does not have six fives of her own. So I'm going to go ahead and call it devilish dice. Now, we both raise our dividers again. Like I suspected, there was not six fives between the both of us. So I win this betting phase. I win! Now Melody has to lose a health point. I get to roll two dice this move phase, and she only gets to roll one. I rolled a single wild and a four. I'm going to use the wild to move an additional six spaces. Therefore, I move ten spaces total, this puts me on a green chance space. When you land on a chance space, you roll your die again. This roll would determine the outcome of the chance space. There are both green and purple chance spaces. If I roll a 0 to 3, I will need to take a drink, so be sure to have a drink handy. I will also lose a health point. If I roll a 4 or a 5, I will have to pleasure Melody. Oh, nice! She would determine the action she would like me to take. I would roll one die to determine the zone. If I roll a single wild, I still have to pleasure Melody. However, I get to pick my own action I would like to take. If I roll a double wild, Melody has to pleasure me. Oh. She would roll twice to determine both the action and the zone. 
I would also gain one health point and one heart point. If I had landed on a purple chain space instead of a green chain space, I would potentially have gained two heart points and two health points. So I roll my die. In this case, I rolled a two. Therefore, I take my drink and I lose another health point. Now it's my turn to move. I roll a double wild. Now I am already maxed out at heart points. I have three actions I can take to spend my heart points. One, I can spend all four of my heart points to gain one health point back. Two, I can spend all of my heart points and trade in any article of clothing I choose and double the value of it to gain health points back. In this particular case, it doesn't make sense for me to do that since I am only down a single health point. Three, I can choose to spend my four heart points to move into the inner circle. The inner circle is riskier. There is more potential to land on spaces that would cost me my health points. However, remember you can also win the game by going around the board three times before your partner. If I move into the inner circle, I can go around the board faster since there are less spaces. This is what I am going to choose to do. So I will use my double wild to move seven spaces. When I get to the door of the inner circle, I will spend my four heart points and they will go back down to zero. In this case, I landed on a plus two heart point space, so I gained two heart points back. Now you've seen me lose three health points so far this game. Again, you can lose health points by both losing the betting phase or by landing on negative health point spaces. Now what happens when I get down to zero? At this point, I need to sell my clothing in order to stay in the game. There are both male and female clothing point values. The different articles of clothing and their point values are depicted by the different icons on the board. For example, I could choose to trade in my shoes for one health point back or I could choose to trade in my shirt for two points. You can only trade in one article of clothing per turn. If you are wearing something that is not depicted on the board, you can trade it in for one health point. Smaller items such as rings, bracelets, necklaces, and earrings count as one singular item. For example, Melody is wearing three rings. She can only get one point for the three altogether. Also, Remember that you can trade in 4 heart points to double the value of the clothing item you trade in. For example, if I have 4 heart points and choose to trade in my shirt, I can now gain 4 health points back instead of just 2. You do not actually have to be at 0 health points in order to trade in clothing. You can choose to do this at any point in the game, but can only do it once per turn. Now let's talk about what happens when you are down to zero health points and you are completely naked. This is where double points and sexy punishment come into play. Let's say Alan has zero health points and zero clothing to trade in and then he loses the betting. In this instance, he has to lose one double point. You can only lose one double point per round. When he moves his double token down one notch, he has to roll for sexy punishment. Alan rolls the die one time to first determine the action. He will either touch, kiss, lick, suck, or bite one part of my body, depending on what he rolls. The rolls and the corresponding actions are listed in the sexy punishment table on the board. If he rolls a blank die, I will decide which action I want him to take. If he rolls a wild or double wild, he gets to choose which action he wants to take. A double wild means the action can be performed for double the amount of time. Typically, actions will be performed for around 30 seconds or so. Then, he will roll the die a second time to determine the area on which the action should be performed. The different zones are ear, lips, neck, nipples, and private. Similar to the action, blank die results in partner's choice and wilds and double wilds are your choice. You only have to perform sexy punishment once per round. Let's say Alan had to perform sexy punishment because he lost a double point during the betting phase. 
If he lands on a negative health point space or a chance space within the same round, he does not have to lose another double point and he does not have to perform safety punishment again. Once you start losing double points, there's no way to gain them back. You just have to hold out as long as you possibly can by winning as many of the betting phases as you can. If you get down to zero devil points, you've lost the game. The second way to win the game is by getting around the board three full times before your partner. Again, you can choose to make the route shorter by spending heart points to get into the inner circle. There are four opportunities on the board to enter. The corresponding heart points you need to spend are listed on the board, and they get lower the further around the board you get. There is also an opportunity to pass the go box instead of the start box. Even if you are already in the inner circle, you have to spend four heart points in order to cross the go box. The go box counts as one full cycle around the board. Now, we are talking about how you win the game, but are there really any losers here? Devilish Dice is a super fun way to play with and tease your partner. In some cases, you don't even end up finishing the game. Alternative gameplay styles like multiplayer or non-strip versions can be found in your manual or on devilishdice.com. If you have any suggestions on how to make the game better, Please, write to us. You can also check out devilishdice.com to see how you can incorporate Project First Day into this game. Anyways, happy fucking! <laughs>